Hey, we are back live on the Army Reenlistment Facebook page, soon to be YouTube, as I'm told. So we're getting after it. So tonight we've got a very special guest to you. We, listen, we have a new promotion system going on. Um, and I, we, we brought in the actual expert because although we're good at this stuff, we brought the actual S, the expert in, Sergeant so Gaskin. So before we get to him, there are some ground rules tonight. So when you ask your questions, please ask all the questions you want to. We're not going to we're not going to address um, beards. We're not going to address any kind of uniform policy because you know what we'll say that for another time. So until then, save those cool questions for uh, for SMA Grinson because he did a great job the other day uh, answering those questions. But Summer Dugaskin will only be answering questions on the NCO evaluation board system. So one more thing: if you're a if you're a game stop stockholder. Congratulations. Today, today's your day. But we're going to get back into it now. So, hey, I'm going to welcome Summer DeGaskins. He is from the Army G1 in the Pentagon, in the five, the, uh, the Pentagon. So, please welcome Summer DeGaskins to the show and tell us about yourself and, and let's get rolling. Right. Good evening out there, Matt. Appreciate the uh, the invite. This is an awesome thing that you're doing, you know, as a, as a soldier for life, continuing on to to uh, help out soldiers and provide that information in this outlet that we have right here. This is pretty awesome. So thanks for doing that, you and the team. Uh, my name is Kenyatta Gaskins. I'm the uh, Sergeant Major for the Directorate of Military Personnel Management, the DMPM. That's out of the office of the G1 up at headquarters DA out of the Pentagon. Um, I've been in a position for about 90 days now. I was selected last summer by my my boss, Brigadier, Brigadier General Promotable Stitt. Um, and it's super challenging to say the least, but we're having a good time. I'm learning a lot and you know, getting better over time. Uh, personally, I've been in the Army for 25 years, just hit 25 years on the 3rd of January. Uh, I'm a career long 42 Alpha human resources professional. Um, most of my time has just been spent down at the center of the universe, uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I'm originally from North Carolina, by the way, but I joined the Army to get away and see the world and they sent me to Fort Bragg, go figure. And I've been off and on ever since for, for the past 25 years. Uh, extremely humbled to be the DMPM SAR Major. Like I said, I don't take it lightly. It's uh, very challenging learning something new every day. But again, I enjoy coming into the to the uh, the office and getting after it. Um, for those who don't know, so the DMPM is one of five directorates within the Army G1. So we're just one of five. Uh, we handle most of the uh, personnel policy for military, being officers, warrant officers, and in the enlisted force. Um, for example, we own things like accessions, uh, retention, of course. We have the uh, uh, senior career counselor, Sergeant Major. I'm sure you know who, who that man is, Sergeant Major Stu Morgan. Uh, separations, officer and enlisted professional development, uh, active component manning guidance, uh, suitability, and what a lot of people don't know is we uh, are responsible for Army Command Policy uh, 600-20. Um, so we're getting pretty busy with, with the things that are going on in our Army uh, in, in under uh, command policy. Um, in a nutshell, that's the DMPM. And Matt, like we were talking a little earlier, kind of a big deal, man. You know that, right? So I'm just hey, honored. <laughs> the DMPM is definitely a big deal, Summer DeGaskins, and we appreciate you coming on here to talk to the audience. So I, I know they're they're excited to have you on here tonight. We already got a bunch of questions coming through here. So, do you want to talk a little bit about the the evaluation uh, system? How that's changed? How it how it changed from the old system to the new system? And, and what are some highlights? Sure. So uh, back in 2019, uh, SMA Daily at the time uh, led the effort for the uh, Sec Army uh, to transition from the legacy promotion system, which um, we had been. Uh, it had been almost 50 years that we've been doing the promotions system. So we decided to let's let's switch this uh, to a merit based uh, over the years. For those who've been in the Army for a decade or two, notice there is a up and down with the enlisted force sometimes. And it was all uh, to get after readiness. Right. So when something big came up, you know, we had to uh, promote our enlisted force. Um, and then when we were drawn down, you know, we had to find a way to get you know, to draw the force down. And that just caused a, you know, a wave effect. And we were trying to what can we do to get after that? So uh, we came up with the 
the evaluation board system. So it's like I said, it's merit based and it follows not just promotions. Uh, it improves readiness. It improves professional development. Uh, it improves leader development. It's the professionalism of the NCO core. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell what we what we decided to do back in 2019 and the board that starts next week, which is the staff sergeant evaluation board. That's the last of the boards to transition over to the evaluation board system. So from from sergeant major all the way down to staff sergeant, that's where we'll be evaluating. Hey, you've got a big fan club going on so far. So uh, I'm going I'm to scroll some uh, some people here for you. So you got some fan clubs. So DMPM Sergeant Major number seven says a good shout out to you. So a hey, big fan club going on here. So we before we go into the the questions and uh, of course there's no uniform questions tonight. Before we go into questions, what are the biggest things that you you've seen as you transition from the old legacy to the new system? So the biggest thing I've seen was uh, just for soldiers to understand that it's just not about promotions. Uh, we're looking at talent management, putting the right person in the right job at the right time. Uh, we're looking at uh, training. So we have soldiers that, that we want to train in order to be fully eligible for promotion. So it's just more than just looking at promotions. And I think uh, that's kind of the biggest takeaway that, that I've noticed so far, just uh, coming out of that mindset where we're just thinking about promotion, promotion, but it's about getting the soldiers trained, fully educated and professional force in order to be able to get promoted uh, in the end. So that's kind of the biggest thing that I've observed about the evaluation board system thus far. And what we're seeing that we're seeing the education is it's it's always going to be a curve. So that's why we have guests like you, the experts on these these uh, these podcasts, these shows, these lives to get to the root of it. So I know the team prepared a few questions that they uh, they got throughout the week. So who wants to go first with a question before we get to the questions from the audience? I'll go first, Sergeant Major. So one of the questions we received. Um, in our inbox, a soldier wanted to know overall, how would this new evaluation system impact a soldier's promotion? Okay, um, it, it doesn't, you know, short answer, it doesn't. So promotions have always based off, been based off of requirements. So as long as we're uh, promoting soldiers based off of requirements, I mean, we've always done it. So it won't, it, it's not really a, a, a change to it. I know it may seem that way, but um, holistically, it's no big change as far as uh, affecting the promotion system. So it's still about putting the right person in the right position for the right job. Gotcha, Sergeant Major. Thank you. It, uh, boom. Like what Sergeant Waterbury had stated, putting the right person in the right job, that um, how is this going to then impact assignment? So if, you know, the OML comes into play, how is that going to impact their assignment? So it, it definitely impacts it. So with the OML system, just like you said, you know, you put the right person in the right job based off that soldier's OML. So, uh, again, we're not only just looking at promotions. We want to make sure the force is educated so they can get after it. It broadened. And, and be a better NCO um, based off this OML system. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Uh, one other question that we had is, uh, what happens if a soldier is found not qualified? So, two things. So there is a not fully qualified, and then there's a not fully qualified for retention. Now, being not fully qualified is not necessarily a negative thing. That just says you may need some more time to develop as an NCO, uh, to be broadened, and in order to be a, a better NCO for the next board. Now, there is a, 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 a another side to it where it's not, not fully qualified for retention. And that's typically when there's some sort of uh, derogatory, derogatory or uh, uh, not so good uh, uh, evaluation file that may uh, affect his ability to continue staying in the Army. Thanks, Sergeant Major. One of the questions that we've gotten a lot of questions about is when does the OML expire? 
Does it expire from when the day that the board convenes or does it expire from the day the next results come out? It, it expires the day of the, the next results come out. So typically a year. So we're going to try to keep it consistent on when we run the board for each grade. So for example, February is gonna be the staff sergeant uh, board, May the master sergeant evaluation board, August sergeant major, and in October, November timeframe is the, is the uh, sergeant first class. We're gonna keep those, uh, try our best to keep those on the same time. So yeah, so essentially a whole year. So if I'm on an OML, I have number X. Um, if I'm not selected for training, or promotion after the training, then I'll have to reboard all over again the next year. And I could potentially get a new OML. I mean, it could go higher or it could, it could stay the same or go lower. But yeah, every single year, it's a new. All right, Major, we have, a, we have another question on the, go ahead, Matt. Oh, go ahead, you got it. Uh, we have a question on the, uh, the screen uh, from A.D. Banks. Uh, if you don't get picked up within the first year, do you have to reboard even if you are most qualified? Yes, it can happen depending on the MOS and depending on the requirements for that MOS. So most qualified is based off of your board score. So I'm not sure how familiar with the, the folks are out there about the promotion board. Excuse me. If, uh, if you have 5.5 or higher as an average score, you're most qualified. It's not a percentage. It is within your MOS, uh, you're getting evaluated and 5.5 or higher is, is, is what gets you most qualified. So having said that, if the that MOS doesn't select enough uh, or doesn't select or doesn't get to you in your OML, then yes, you would have to reboard even as a most qualified. You wanna handle some more questions, Tim? Sergeant Major, um, so this new evaluation board, how does, does this pertain to the reserves? This will pertain to the reserves. So uh, eventually, uh, I'm not sure of the time frame, but it will eventually transition to the reserve force also. Um, and it will be ran the same way. Um, so yes, it will definitely, uh, the reserves will be involved in it as well. Go Tim. Tim, you're uh, you're muted right now. So I'm if, uh, if I'm MQ'd on the OML is five, but I don't hit 36 months until one October 2021, will I still be able to pin if there are slots left for my MOS, or will I have to reboard? So it's 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 all about being fully qualified to be able to get promoted. So if you're OML five MQ and all that, um, and if you're don't meet the requirements, which one of them for mass? Uh, I thought I saw a rank there. I believe it's uh, right now it's it's 18 months, excuse me, 36 months time and grade for for the MOS. So if you don't have that 36 months, then yes, uh, you will be passed over for someone else who is fully qualified. If that makes sense. No, that does. That's, that makes sense. So we have another question from uh, from Carla Barth. If we can bar someone from continued service, why not allow people to keep, keep re-enlisting? Re so I guess this is the bar question when it comes to uh, not fully qualified. So again, it's it's not fully qualified, which means uh, you are just not ready right now. Not a bad thing. It's just you need some more development, some more seasoning. So that's not going to uh, bar you. That's not a, a means to bar you. Now, with the not fully, fully qualified for retention, um, that is when we're looking for someone with uh, derogatory uh, things in their records and whatnot. So I don't think those are the ones that we want to let re-enlist anyway, right? If I am understanding the question correctly. Probably not. And that's that's a good point. So definitely to your career counselors for your, your bars of re-enlistment, that's a good thing. Um, it looks like you have a little fan club here going on. So we'll keep scrolling these past and you can read it as you want to. So as we talk to Sergeant Major Gaskins from the Army G1, Ask your questions. We'll scroll them across here. We'll, we'll get some exposure. Um, but a great opportunity to ask your questions about the NCO evaluation board process. Uh, let me see what we got here. Who else has a question right now before we see more questions? Uh, I got one, Sergeant Major. Go ahead. 
Is there a more efficient expectation of when HRC will start sending soldiers to MLC um, once they have been boarded? Um, someone is, is saying that they wanted to attend in May this year, but they had surgery last year. Um, so is there a way that we can get a better timeline of when these soldiers that are fully qual qualified or most qualified can start expecting to see some NCOES? So yes, uh, right now what HRC does is they send out a quarterly requirements based off of MOS and, and, and grade. Um, it's actually posted on the promotion section of the HRC website. It doesn't, it doesn't project, but it gives you an idea of how many NCOs at whatever MOS and grade uh, that they're looking at to promote for that quarter. And again, I'll tell you, you get, you're a big fan club. If you're not getting um, LinkedIn messages or Facebook messages today, you're going to get them now. Who has the next question for us? I have uh, social media. I've been told by my G1 star major I better get on it. So I guess I need to do that now. Def definitely, definitely LinkedIn, but Facebook is probably where it's at right now for you. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, Major. Sorry, Major. I, I saw one in the comments. I'm going to paraphrase because I kind of lost it in the comments, but it's a it's a good question. Is there any way to know? Um, who is um, most qualified that has a, a better OML number than you rather than just seeing it on, you know, the, you know, I heard this. Is there a way to know who got a better score than you? Yeah. If they, tell, OML number you. if they tell you one and uh, leaders should encourage their subordinates to reach out on act um, and become their, uh, become their, uh, their mentor so they can see what their OML number is. But if I had an OML number and I wanted to know if, 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 if Matt had a higher OML number than me, I have to ask Matt and he had, he have, he'd have to be willing to tell me. I'm going to um, tell you right now, if we had, if I was still there, yours is higher. Just let you know. <laughs> so we have another, another question here from, uh, some, from Tori. Hey, so what, uh, before we go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was I was looking at the question. This is, this is this is enlisted policy. The good thing about enlisted policy, they can always be exceptions. We can always update things. It's not law or any kind of statute. So as this thing improve uh, uh, goes in time, if we recognize that we need to improve it, some things that were disadvantaging soldiers, we can do that. And we can do it rather quickly. So I just want to put that out there that that the way the board is now, the process is now. It may not be that way a year from now. Anything from time and grade requirements uh, to how many or uh, how many requirements for promotions that we have, those things can change. So I just want to let folks know that. Um, and now, if, if we if if a regular soldier wants to hopefully implement changes or ask for changes, do they just tweet the SMA or how does that work? <laughs> you probably could. I've heard he's been getting a lot of tweets lately, but uh, I would recommend reaching out uh, to your local G1 SAR major. For one, uh, they can to get you squared away and, and, and ensure that you have the information that you need. And also, I'm, I'm out there as well. Uh, again, like I said, I'm not on social media yet, but I will be probably before the end of the week. But uh, they could always look me up in the global. I'm there for any questions. Uh, installations want any kind of LPDs over Teams or some virtually or, you know, if I can even get there, I'd do that. So I'm more than willing uh, to reach out uh, to, to educate the force. I just ask that you reach out to your local AG, Sergeant Major, your your senior human resources professionals first. That makes sense. And Antonio Grant, it looks like it's a cat here, but I assume it's a goat. You must be the goat, Mr. <laughs> Gaskin. So uh, <laughs> looking good there. Hey, we have a question. Uh, now, you may know this person because who knows? But here's a question from, um, hey, um, do you want to handle this, Waterbury? Hello. Yes. Yeah, so this question, Sergeant Major, is actually coming out from Master Sergeant Basaji. He will be joining you shortly. You're taking him away from the SFAC. Uh, but basically, it looks like he was saying that in theory, your OML number could be number one in your MOS, but you can still need to reboard every year because your MOS may be um, a lower density and is just not promoting. So I think he was just clearing that up uh, for some in the comments. Um, but I did see one comment, Sergeant Major, that I've actually been wondering this question for myself. So uh, basically, if you have a soldier um, that is fully qualified or most qualified on the list, um, but they don't have that 36 um, month time and grade, 
required for a promotion. Could you maybe explain why um, you guys decided to go ahead and include them on this list? So we have requirements to, to, to be evaluated, right? And at the time we're looking at that NCO, um, not with 36 months time of grace we can get looked at. We're looking for the best NCO in that particular MOS. Now it can happen and it has happened where uh, a, a soldier with a low, uh, a, a low OML didn't meet all the requirements. That's not a bad thing, but in actuality, it's kind of a good thing because that shows that soldiers still out there getting after it. Just don't meet the time of grade requirements right now. Um, I just uh, encourage soldiers to keep striving. I mean, that's what this evaluation board is all about, to, get, to have NCOs continue to strive and be better at their jobs, be better leaders, and the rest will come. The rest will absolutely come. I know it doesn't seem that way sometimes. And quite frankly, when I first uh, was digesting the, the evaluation board process, I kind of questioned it a little bit. But the more and more I've learned about it, I feel like we're making a more professional force. Uh, we're improving the professional development, leader development. We're getting after it for a fully trained non-commissioned officer to be uh, fully qualified for promotion. Awesome. Hey, great, great stuff. So uh, Avante Norwood, she has a question, and this is she's not going to tweet the SMA. She's going to ask you directly. Has the Army thought about removing names from board files? I know photos are gone, and um, what what is what's the thought behind removing names as well? The Army is all about people first. Now that's the chief staff of the Army's priority: uh, diversity, inclusion, and all of those things. It, we want to get away from self identifiers. Right now, uh, names are still on them, but yes, that has been. Uh, tossed around as a potential idea to do in the future. Right now, it's still names, but we, you know, we're, we're just starting. We're improving this process as we go on. Um, starting off with the DA photo, starting off with the, um, the the identity, racial identity, things of that nature, and we're just going to improve it over time. Okay, good deal. Again, hey, Dan Gordon says he's late. He's late to the party. Yes, Dan, you self admitted you're late to the party. We get that, but he says once you're once you're MQ'd. What do you need to do when you actually pin on? I'm sure it's a ceremony, but I'm sure he's digging deeper than that, though. What do you need to do to? I guess to pin on. So uh, maybe it's promotion orders. Wait for the list to come out. Exactly. Get after it, first and foremost. Right. If you're MQ and you're MOS, uh, uh, the requirements uh, hit your hit your OML number and you meet all the you're fully qualified for that promotion is going to happen same way you're going to get promotion orders and then you go have a good time for your promotion party uh COVID mitigation efforts right do that smartly but definitely go ahead and celebrate your your promotion if you are fully eligible and Dan if you want to clarify your question go ahead and try that who has the next question for us uh, so, Sergeant Major, one of the questions that we've been getting is how will we be able to forecast the timeline for promotion? In the old system, you would have a certain amount of people that you knew were going to get promoted. How will you be able to do that in this new system? So, in, in development, we're going to be able to to do that. What what we I'm almost hesitant to put things out there like that. So I'll just we are we are coming up with the ways for soldiers to be able to see that. Right now, it's kind of tough to see it, but in in the future, that's one of the things that we work on. I'll I'll, I'll leave it at that. So now it's a great question. Who's got the next question? Looks like Carla Barth. Yep. When you see the, go ahead. So Sergeant Major, when you, um, after these uh, personnel are boarded, is there a way for them to see what their board specific feedback was for them in order to do better? So, you know, during the promotion board, the way that worked, it'd come back and be a, uh, a CMF, AAR, or, or, you know, giving them feedback on what they should have been looking for, what the board was looking for to promote that NCO. Um, right now, we, we don't have that. But again, these are things that we've been talking about in the DMPM. We've got some, some awesome Americans, some, some smart people that are, are coming up with policies for soldiers to be able to uh, see some feedback. We're looking at throwing it on, on ACT. Um, and, and it's personal. It's not just some generic based off your whole MOS. We, we want to get to the point where we look at it and say, this is a case in point. If you weren't selected or your OML wasn't wasn't called for that specific board, this is what the board was looking for. And this is what we identified that you didn't have that we were looking for soldiers to get identified for for uh, training. Go ahead, Tim. 
Oh, sorry, Major. So CJ Munoz, he comes up with the question, what do we refer to as the right person at the right position? Do we look back at their records? Do we look back at their do we look back at their records? Uh, OML doesn't tell you specific qualifications. So it's still an evaluation board. So it's ran just like a promotion board was ran. Yes, they look back at your records to determine who has the most potential uh, for training and selection and eventually promotion. So uh, yes and yes, since you answered that, asked that question twice, I'll answer it twice. <laughs> and uh, Princess Shea, she had a question. There, there's been discussion in the, in the comments about frocking. Can you explain how that works now? So under the evaluation board system, there is no more frocking. Uh, you must become fully qualified to be eligible for a promotion. And once it hits your OML, fully qualified means you meet the time of grade requirements, you meet the PME requirements, and you're in good standing. And if they call your OML, you're selected for a promotion. So under the evaluation board system, there there is no more frocking. Hey, Nathan White, hey, ask your question. I'll get on right now. I, I, don't see all, I don't see all your questions in the chat, but we got you, man. Keep, go, keep going after Tim. Watch the questions for Mass Sergeant Wyatt's question, right? <laughs> Sorry, Major. Uh, Quinn asks, how will the previous promotion list on the old system affect the old OML? I know some people have questioned since not all lists have been exhausted um, from the, the previous one, how is that going to affect for this new ML, OML? So the uh, Master Sergeant Promotion Board, uh, that list hasn't been exhausted yet. So we're looking at promoting for the Master Sergeant Evaluation Board that just convened, that was just released in June of this year. So we have we have a couple more months of promoting under the old OML system, or excuse me, under the old promotion system. All right, good deal. So who has the next question for uh, Summer de Gaskins here? There's a lot coming through today. <laughs> Love that one. Hey, I'm not on the island anymore. I'm in, I'm in the basement of the Pentagon now. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Major. MK Solo wants to know how do people with ML without MLC get a better OML than ones that have MLC complete, or does that matter? It does not matter. So under the evaluation board system, um, you receive an OML based off your potential for 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 promotion or assignments. So the ones that are MLC complete, that's great if their o their OML is low enough to be. Uh, call in in order to uh, be fully qualified for promotion. So it doesn't really matter at that point. I mean, it's great that 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 the NCO has the 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 schooling, the PME knocked out. But if their OML number is higher than other NCOs, then they won't get called uh, for uh, for selection for promotion until they're fully qualified and it hits their OML. Cool. Go off of the OML, to continue with the OML. Uh, William Bake asks, will there be a historical OML ranking? So if you ranked 100 this year, but 30th the following year, will that follow you or will no one know? No one will know. That won't follow you. Once that, that old board is done, it's done. But William, definitely uh, publicize on social media so we can collect information and rank it next year as well, okay? Let's do it for you. <laughs> Who has next question? Sergeant Major, a question that was asked to me that isn't um, on the screen, but I'll ask you uh, right now is the old promotion system used to have um, the stable, uh, I'm sorry, the STAB. Um, under the new evaluation board, will there be a STAB or is there a need for the STAB anymore? There's no need for the STAB anymore because soldiers are getting evaluated. Remember, it's not a promotion. Oh man, I didn't have whatever in my, in my file when that promotion board was going on. No, it, it will no longer be a STAB anymore. Another question that we had, Sergeant Major, that came up that uh, that's not on the screen right now is about if who can see your OML number? Can your branch manager see your OML number? They can. Your talent manager can see your OML number. That's what go HRC uses what they call a manner of performance tool, a mock tool, and they use your OML scores to determine who's the best, again, right place, right time to take the, the, the assignment. So that, that's one of the things that they use. Uh, in order to to put the right person in the net in a new job. Hey, so yes, thanks. So real fast, I know those questions coming through. People want to come on the show with us. Not yet. So what you see here on the on the right hand side of the screen, this is the Army reenlistment team. These are the people that 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 run the the uh, the website, the social media. These are the volunteers. We brought on an expert 
Senator Gaskins from the Pentagon talk about the NCO evaluation board. So in the future, we're going to invite guests on to ask questions or just a just tap dance around here. So, hey, who has the next question for us? Oh, I got it. It's from my hero. Uh, so it's actually from Eric Dethridge. Uh, as you can see by his picture, it's GOAT because he is the GOAT. Uh, Eric Dethridge asks, is the elimination of retention control points for staff sergeants and above still being looked at? If so, do you have an expected timeline for implementation? Before you answer that, uh, Summer DeGaskins, um, I want to clarify the GOAT. Just so you know, it was already brought up that Summer DeGaskins is a GOAT. There's one GOAT. That's it. Uh, so, Herm Eric, Herm Go ahead. Eric <laughs> Dethridge is the GOAT and when it comes to 79 Sierras. <laughs> There you go, 79 Sierras, you got it. Um, so a question about retention control points. So we're in discussions about what the future will look like for how long NCOs can stay in the Army. Um, if we're looking at talent management and having folks who are out there still getting after it, um, you know, there's been questions, like why should they have any kind of RCP, which is a valid point. You got guys out there getting it. Um, but no, to answer your question, it's, it's being looked at um, but we don't have an expected timeline for the implementation. We're still kind of gathering up uh, some information on that right now. Hey, here's a great question from Elizabeth. Maybe it's one word, maybe it's two. Who knows? How will reenlistment tie into the marketplace if your reenlistment window opens before ask the ask window? So should I answer that or what? what would it be a collaboration? How do, how do we want to do that? Hey, hey, hey uh, Tim, if you want to ask it with him, go ahead. Hey, you saw me. You start with it. <laughs> I'll caveat, dovetail. Ask him, right? You know the the, the new uh, YMABs and whatnot. I, I can only I can only speculate. So I'm gonna say it, and then you correct me if I'm wrong. How about that? I got um, you. Thinking there will always be opportunities for reenlistment for uh, when the window opens, and that can somehow aligned with ask him, ask him. Um, Trying to think of a specific scenario, but I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, what do you, what I, got do you think? I got you. So, so I made you, so what's going to happen is uh, we can reenlist soldiers when they're coming before when they in their reenlistment window. Branch managers will not put them on assignment uh, until they hit the YMAB now, and so uh, they won't be able to touch them for that period of time. So it actually gives the soldiers more opportunity to get what they want from reenlistment. So it's an opportunity to take advantage of it. When you're in your reenlistment opportunity window and you don't have a uh, YMAB yet, we can help you out because all you need is a certain amount of time on station before you hit your YMAB. We can help you out with that. We can get you that assignment as long as you're in re reenlistment opportunity window. So it's going to work hand in hand, um, it's, but it's, it's, it's definitely a plus to reenlist. So always reenlist. Good answer. Now you sound like the goat now. Uh, <laughs> Who has that question for us? Uh, there's a question about uh, Quentin Jackson Joyce. He asked the question, due to COVID restrictions still in place with HRC, will HRC conduct more virtual NCOES classes or will it continue to be waived for promotion? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll play a uh, military schools branch right now. So <laughs> as of right now, um, I believe it depends on the area of the country that the, uh, that the NCO uh, PDS um, school is happening, you, you know, so if, if, if the COVID cases are up in a specific area, then they'll look at going to uh, to virtual. But will it be weighed for promotion? I'm, I'm sorry, that, that last part on the question, I think I think that's what it said. Yeah, they asked, would it be weighed, would, uh, would they weigh uh, the requirements for the education to be still be promoted? No, only in specific scenarios. Of course, uh, always re-enlist, like Chris Nurse said, that's right. <laughs> Sergeant Major, so what happens if you don't promote within that board year? So I guess what I'm wanting to know is if you consistently are fully qualified, but you just um, your name, your number still isn't called within that board. How long can you continue to fully qualify until it's just not your time? Thinking like with officers, when they get looked at for promotion boards, they have X amount of promotion boards, as of right now anyway, to uh, to get looked at before, you know, hey, we, you know, thanks for your service. We're, we're not we're not doing that uh, uh, right now. So I would just 
recommend, I would just encourage that you still continue to get after it. Just because you're you're fully qualified, that's not a bad thing. You know, people look at that like, oh man, I'm not MQ, so I'm never going to get selected for a promotion. It's all about requirements. It's all about getting you trained up, and it's all about getting you fully qualified before, uh, in order to get you ready for a promotion. Gotcha, Sergeant Major. And I think that's also why it's probably really important for service members to read that AAR um, after their board um, so they can continue to see what, you know, the areas that the board members saw, the board panel members saw, and they can continue to work off of that. So thanks, Sergeant Major. And before we move on, before we ask the next question, I know uh, when it comes to the Army, Sergeant Major uh, Grinson, uh, SMA Grinson yesterday the other day, we have one of the most robust transition programs out there. So if you don't get selected or you can't move on or if you don't want to reenlist because no beards, we have one of the best transition programs available. So, hey, your reserve, your reserve component career counselor will help you out. Who's next, Tim? Uh, let's go with Gene C. Morales, Sergeant Major. If you have a low number on the OML and are bypassed for promotion for not having an MLC, will you be reconsidered once you graduate? That's a yes. That's a definite yes. If there is a requirement after you graduate MLC, and you're low, and if it calls that, that if, they, if they need someone to get promoted, you will get promoted. All right, this is an easy one for you. I'm throwing you a softball. <laughs> so is step eliminated? Tier Williams wants to know that. So, oh man, I know Tier. Hey, so uh, step is not eliminated. This is, this is what it is all about. It's about selecting you, training and educating you all in order to get you fully qualified for promotion. So this is the very definition of step, Tier. And we got a lot of questions, Sergeant Major, about the AAR. When will they start doing the actual in-depth notes in ACT for the specific individual on AAR? Because I know that didn't happen this FY, but is that going to happen soon? So hopefully soon. So we're looking at it. We're, we're looking at how that's going to work. Uh, obviously, it's a Army system with AF ACT. So it, it, it's a matter of time. So I don't want to put a, 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 a timeline on it so people could come back and, and tell me how wrong I was. So that's that's being looked at, though. Uh, Matt Savage asks, did we ask when they will start promoting off the OMLs? Army spouse asking here. Which OML? That would be my question. So if you're talking about the most recent uh, Sergeant First Class Evaluation Board, we're starting to promote in June of this year. That's That makes sense. Thank you for being an Army spouse, Matt Savage. We really appreciate that. <laughs> Who's has the next question? Sam, AJ, what do you got? A lot of these questions are repetitive. They've already been answered, so I don't know if we want to go over them again. Probably not. Um, right. <laughs> uh, I'm looking. Oh, one question that uh, a few people have asked. Will this new promotion system, I think I know the answer, uh, will it tie into other programs such as like MACP, EFMP, will that have anything to do with it or, or no, just like normal promotions in the past? The evaluation board process, we look at assignments as well. So if, if you're, if you know, again, like I mentioned a little earlier, HRC uses the manner of performance tool to, to influence assignments. So if you're out there, um, and you, you have a pretty low OML, you are one of the guys, guys or girls that's going to get looked at for getting those those broadening uh, or, or those operational assignments. Now, with anything with assignments, there's always some factors in there. EFMP, MACP, those things will always, uh, you know, will have a say so. Um, but again, we, we try to do what's best for the soldier and, and, and by extension, the soldier's family. And here's a question. Here's a, here's a comment from Roger Rendon, if you can put it back on the screen there. Well, uh, this is, so he's actually the EPM DSART major, and he's a great, uh, great softball player as well. So uh, reach out to your, uh, your boards there as well in Roger's comments. Who's next? Thanks, Roger. Major, I got one. So this person is asking for a friend. If a soldier is flagged for height weight at the time of the board, do they still get evaluated? Uh, additionally, if they get skipped and come off their flag, do they pick up the next go round? Um, because they notice whenever they look at the the SRB now, it's uh, blocked out. So if I understand the question, so if they're flagged specifically for height and weight, 
um, will they get evaluated? So yes, they will get evaluated. However, um, if depending on their own mail, if they if their own mail is called for promotion and they're not fully qualified and in good standing, being flagged meaning not in good standing, um, they won't they won't get promoted. Um, if they skip and come off the flag. I'm struggling with that question because I, I don't really I don't totally understand it. Oh. So we got another question here uh, from Matt Young. Uh, when will we start getting racking stacked within the Army career tracker for all NCO ranks to see where we fall? So that's happening now. ACT has the OMLs after the after the board results are released. Uh, when the Sarkers Class Evaluation Board was released uh, last week, the next day the OMLs were 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 on ACT. And can I cover one a little bit? I saw a uh, Sergeant Major. She is the military schools branch uh, Sergeant Major. So that's she has a military schools branch Facebook page. So there you go. Hey, a lot of Sergeant Major watching tonight. So you got to hey, make sure you're telling the right information, Sergeant Major Gaskins. <laughs> Sergeant Major, can you give us any more details on the conditional promotions under um, this new evaluation system? So I know like uh, very recently, the pregnancy, um, temporary promotions, that was new um, deployments. Can you tell us how um, those criteria will play with the uh, evaluation board that we're doing now? Well, it's OK. So it's temporary promotions. Um, if you have soldiers are are their OML is called and they are fully eligible for that promotion. And if they're one of, in, in one of those three conditions, those three conditions being deployed to a, a, a combat zone and also receiving imminent danger and, and hostile fire pay, then they are eligible for a promotion and they just must complete PME 365 days from the return from redeployment. That's the deployment part of the temporary uh, promotions policy. Then you have, uh, again, like you said, pregnancy, so the same thing, if a, if a soldier is otherwise qualified and they're pregnant at the time so they can't attend PME, then they uh, can request to be temporarily promoted and temporarily reported and promoted. And then uh, the timeline after postpartum will determine when they have to, have to go back to PME to complete that. Uh, and then also with the sergeant's major, for those that are in non-res sergeant's major course, if they're otherwise making uh, uh, progress and they're not behind. And again, if their OML is called, then they can request to be temporarily promoted as well. They just have to figure out the uh, 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 what they will finish, have to finish up school and, and, and continue to stay in good standing. What's the next question for us? Uh, Tim Cazoles says, if you are a top 5% OML, why are soldiers in the top 50% getting MLC slots before the top 5%? Uh-oh. So we got to stop looking at percentages. So the the it's it's essentially by most qualified, fully qualified. So if you have soldiers that, that are higher uh, and getting MLC slots before the lower ranking soldiers, it's because they were fully qualified to get selected for training for school. Um, and and the, the, the top five, they weren't for some reason. It could be a myriad of reasons, but if they're not qualified, fully qualified, then they'll get passed over for the next fully qualified soldier. And this might be for you, uh, Shante. I'm not sure. How do you realize to come back in? I'm not sure. So you're, so you're a local army recruiter? How does that work? <laughs> well, judging by the previous comment, I'm pretty sure I saw that he was um, a prior uh, DMPM Sergeant Major, and although we would love to have you back, um, sorry, I can't make that call. <laughs> uh, so, Sergeant Major, one of the questions that we've been asked a lot is Do OML numbers shift left or right throughout the fiscal year? So, possibly quarterly, if somebody gets uh, promoted uh, or retirements, do you will your number bump up or will your number go down? The numbers will stay the same, but again, you know, retirements, medical, what, what, what have you, they just skip over that soldier and go to the next fully qualified uh, NCO. Hey, Derek Johnson's on here. Watch us right now, and he says great form. I think we all know Derek Johnson, right? Absolutely. Number That's seven. Next question. Yeah, number seven. There it is. <laughs> what's the next question? Yeah, that's it. 
Sergeant Major, if you have an approved retirement date and your OML number gets called, can you um, take that rank or do you need to proceed with that retirement packet? You can proceed. It's just, it's a great thing. If you're approved for retirement, that's not a problem. It, it didn't change from, from the promotion system. If you have an approved retirement, um, you're, you're, you're on your way out now. Now, there are always exceptions to policy. Remember I said this is a listed policy, so we can always uh, submit for exceptions. I'll put that out there. All right, Sergeant Major, uh, Mondre asked, when you say the evaluation is based on assignments, are we talking about just duty location and roles within there? Or are we talking about specific duty assignments? Duty, specific duty assignments, because you can do those assignments in any given location. It's just uh, what are you doing uh, to 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 broaden yourself in your in your MOS? So specific uh, duty assignments, not not locations. And are those based off of uh, what's in the DA Pam? So based off of your MOS, is it based off? Of, so for example, uh, I, as career counselors, I've had a lot of conversations with people that have specific positions, broadening assignments in our MOS that felt that their number wasn't this uh, felt they weren't uh quantified for bait taking that harder assignment was that is that taking it is that supposed to be taken into play the that are, are, are getting after the harder assignments is that taken into play yeah in accordance with with 600-25 that that mos they will identify what the tough jobs are if you have soldiers that are taking those of course that'll come into account when it, when you're looking at for for uh evaluating and looking for assignments and for school EME. That makes sense. A lot of questions coming through, Tim. What you got next? Uh, so we have, we got, we just got one. I think we're getting a lot of the same questions over and over. But Adriana Brinkley, uh, she wants to know, and I know we've already touched on this, but just to hit it again, Star Major, is there a set time timeline scheduled for when Star Major, uh, Star First Class Evaluation Boards are set to occur for the next few fiscal years? A lot of people ask these questions because of the fact uh, we didn't even knew when the set time was before. Sometimes the Star First Class Board would be in April. Sometimes it'd be in October. Yeah, it was a time there where it was kind of rotating. Again, that was just based off of, of what was going on at the, in the Army at that time. So, again, just for the folks who didn't hear it. So, we're going to try to keep on the same timeline with Sergeant First Class in particular being in October. Um, again, next week, the Staff Sergeant Evaluation Board, so it'll be in February. And May for, for Master Sergeant and August for Sergeant Major. So, we're going to do our best to keep it on that timeline every year. Now, I tell you, we can do this all night long, Summer DeGaskins. These are questions that are coming through here. But let's say we let's say we have three more questions from the audience. Tim, if you can moderate three questions, we can get we can get Summer DeGaskins out of here to his family, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll close it down. So, three more questions. What do you have, Tim? All right. So, just what was something we were just talking about. So, to go a little bit more in depth with it, Sergeant Major, does the DA Pam identify the tough jobs? Now, how are they identified? One hundred percent. True. Yes, that's that's based off that MOS DA Pam 600-25, which is updated with by each CMF whenever they feel the need to update it. Yeah, it definitely identifies the tough jobs. So that's the first. When it comes to the evaluation boards, that's what the the uh, the board members are looking at um, for those MOSs. So yes, absolutely, they identify the tough jobs. All right. So Gary Scarn asks. Uh, so the SAR first class board. Convened in October, the results were given in January, but you don't smart in, uh, start promoting in June. Does this make sense? Now, I got what he's saying, but help it make sense for Gary, Sergeant Major. It's all about requirements. Um, and then for those, and honestly, I didn't know, it's all about how many master sergeants you can have in the Army at any given time, too. So there's a percentage, which I didn't know. So there's 2.5. 2. Uh, 5% master sergeants in the Army at, at any given time. So, I mean, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Percentages of, of how many you can have in the Army, that I, that relates to money and how, how much we're paying uh, soldiers. So, yes, um, might not make sense to you, but in, in the ultimate scheme of things, it's all uh, kind of fiscally. Um, yeah, it's all about fiscal and then. All right, Tim, last question. Make it a good last, one. What do you got? Last question, Sergeant Major. All right, low OML, does that still get priority for the NCOES regardless of time and grade? 
So if they have the identified time and grade, 36 months. So low OML, being fully qualified, which means you meet the time and grade requirements, yes, that gets you priority for, M, uh, for NCO PDS. I think that's all we got right now, Sergeant Major. Um, we appreciate this. Go ahead, Matt. I'll tell you, this, is, this, is, this has been a great, great education for the retention community. Just soldiers overall, great stuff here. I know I learned a lot here. So uh, so we'll try to go back and answer a lot of the questions after this right here. Uh, Sergeant Major Gaston doesn't have his Facebook yet, but when he gets it up here, he may do the same thing for us. So, so I want to thank Sergeant Major Gaskin and give him the last word. As Now, I, I did see a comment come through about the Red Sox stuff. Listen, as a as a New York fan, I apologize for the hats we had wearing for the Red Sox fans. So I'll square with next time. But Sergeant Major Gaskin, what are your last words for the audience? So thanks again for this forum. I mean, I, I had a good time. Slightly intimidating at first, I much must admit, but um, it, it was good. And I feel like uh, there's so much more data out there. There's so many more details to the process that we didn't get in here. But I would just ask you to reach out to your, your local AG Sergeant Major. Uh, reach out to me. I'm on the global, like I mentioned earlier, um, to learn it. I mean, I had a PowerPoint presentation set and ready to go. Matt Sondani, he was like, dude, nah, don't, don't even do it. You don't want to <laughs> have the folks to sleep. So um, there's a lot to it that I know I didn't hit and, and, and things that just didn't come to my mind at the time, but definitely reach out. It's new. Anything new, it's, it's it takes a while to learn, takes a while to digest. And I totally understand that. Um, so again, this is the way the army is going. It's about having that fully qualified, fully broadened soldier ready to take on the next position of responsibility. Hey, thanks, Armand Gaskin. And those that want more information on this, please get with your local AG chapters, your local AG leaders down there. Have the discussions here. Have, have the town hall discussions. Bring in people that can talk about it. Just have fun with it because it's a new thing, but it's important. And the more you discuss it, you may impact a lot of change coming forward. So, hey, to the Armour Realism team, thank you very much for, for doing this. So, Armand Gaskin, thanks for your time. And we look forward to next week's show as we bring on more experts to talk about more great things. So until then, everybody, have a great and safe evening, and see you all next week, all right? Take care. Mm -hmm.